All right, so what we have here is we have these zeros, 0, negative 1, and 1. And what we want to do is determine the polynomial that has those zeros. So again, if those are zeros, remember when, we're, when we look into a polynomial, we're trying to solve for the zeros. What we end up with you know, is these values for our x, our, our input value x, you know, where the graph is going to cross or touch the x-axis. So each one of these zeros is what x equals um, when it crosses the x-axis. Therefore, over each zero, we can write as x equals 0, x equals negative 1, and x equals positive 1. Now, again, to write the polynomial, we need to have some factors you know, to multiply by to give us this you know, polynomial or function. So if you, if you remember, usually where we got these values, what we're going to do is we're going to want to set these equal to 0. So I'll subtract a 0 here, add 1, add 1. Subtract 1, subtract 1. Now, obviously, x minus 0 is just still going to be you know, x. So we can just say x still equals 0. But here I have x plus 1 equals 0. And here I have x minus 1 equals 0. Now, usually, again, when we're, determ when we're trying to factor or anything else to get to the zeros, if we factor, we factored into the zero product property, meaning we had a product of its factors set equal to 0. Then we could separate each one of these. So what we do is we'd factor this all out to here. Then we'd use the zero product property to define the zeros. So what I'm doing is I'm just working backwards. And now, since I have these all equal to 0, I can now say that, well, what if I rewrote this kind of using the zero product property backwards? So if I had x times x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0, that's how we would have got to there if we, were, if we were trying to determine the zeros. But again, we're not trying to solve set this equal to 0. We're actually trying to find out what is the polynomial equals f of x. Now, what I simply need to do is just uh, multiply this out to find this function. Now, I'm going to multiply these two binomials because I notice that it is a difference of two squares. So by multiplying these out, um, I notice that I don't need to foil everything. I can just foil the first and last two terms because, again, it's a difference of two squares. So therefore, by multiplying my first two terms and the last two terms, I get x squared minus 1 equals f of x. I'm actually going to rewrite the f of x first here. Then I distribute these x to both of these terms. So therefore, I get x cubed minus negative 1 times x, which is negative x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your function for the zeros, 0, negative 1, and 1. Thanks.